Can we give it to the Lord Jesus, everybody, please? Lift a shout to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I know you're a bit tired, but please bear with me. How many of us now, not just religiously now or traditionally, how many of us were truly blessed by the previous word session we have received? Amen. Amen. Let's appreciate the Lord for that word. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Beautiful. Praise God. And can we appreciate our pastor for that rich word? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. Thank you, first and foremost, for bringing us to learn, to be refreshed and be reminded of some things. Glory, hallelujah. And thank you for trusting me uh, with this great pulpit. I do not take it lightly at all. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, you know, Kenneth Copeland, um, one of the leading fathers in ministry, he said something that there are three great honors in the life of a man, three great honors. Um, one of them, he said, um, is to be desired by a godly woman. A godly woman desire you and marry you, that's an honor, praise the Lord. I pass that one, amen. The second, <laughs> hallelujah. The second one he said is for someone to trust you with his pulpit to bring the word of God to his people. Thank you, sir, for that honor too, amen. Hallelujah. The third one, the next time you meet me, I believe I will remember and I will tell you. Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, but sincerely, and um, let me borrow from Pastor Dunka Gombok. He said many times when, when I say, when we say we are blessed, people assume that's the usual thing said um, after receiving message. He, he now said he preferred to say, I'm blessed, I'm impacted, and transformed. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, Reverend Dunka is very passionate, amen? And truly, that's how... I was feeling as the first word was going on. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said with no, no iota of hypocrisy, amen, that if pastor had continued and just shared the grace without me speaking, I am blessed and fulfilled, sincerely. Blessed and fulfilled. Praise God. I'm sure you agree with me. You learn better by receiving, by listening, than by speaking. When you are speaking, well, there's just a little, you know, but by listening, like somebody called me today, someone that was in church, and quoted something he heard that I said yesterday. He said, oh, that blessed me so much. Do you know, I did not remember that I said that until he quoted it. I said, okay, it's true. So by, after he finished talking, I noted that in my note too, amen? So he has taught me what I taught. I hope somebody will taught me, sorry, will, will taught, taught me what I've taught. Is it taught or teach now? Somebody will teach me <laughs> what I teach today. Amen. I'm not saying everybody should call me or praise the Lord so that um, um, you won't hear network busy, not available. <laughs> praise the Lord. I was in a meeting um, recently just before they will introduce me. They call the singers to sing. Uh, not like this place. It's wonderful singing. Thank you, my sister. What a wonderful... I'm not seeing her. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Very wonderful singing. But I was somewhere just before I would come up, they call singers, plural. I won't call their names. Amen. As they came up, they just started, network busy, network busy. <laughs> Did I call name? Not at all. Hallelujah. But um, really, really blessed tonight. Praise God. And I want to believe that you are blessed too. Amen. So our Father, we thank you. We thank you for loving us enough to give us opportunities to learn from you, to be made by you, to be transformed into the image of Christ. Hallelujah. To glorify you on earth and be honored by you. 
we thank you. We do not take that for granted. Thank you, Holy Spirit, our helper. You helped us while our pastor was ministering. I ask for help also as I minister this night. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Pastor Sarah, thank you for loving us. Amen. <clears throat> Pastor Sarah has been loading us with food. This part I say I must mention from here. Amen. Just before we come for church, I, I saw two, three big basins, three big bowls. I said, what's this say your food? I said, well, I told the brother that's uh, John now. Uh, ha! And John can be very persistent. He says, I will serve you. I said, no, not now. He said, I will serve you. I said, see, John, we have to agree. It's either you will serve me and you will preach, or you will not serve and I will preach. When I said that, he was terrorized. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let me appreciate John. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. But, but I saw enough food. Amen. And I hardly resisted eating the food you made for lunch. But I will eat it tonight too. That food is original from Taraba State. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As a praise the Lord. We are welcome once again in Jesus' name. Praise God. Tonight, um, I want to continue from where I stopped yesterday. Amen. Deuteronomy 8, 18. I read that. I just want to continue from there. And the Lord will grant me speed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. <clears throat> so, I want to subtitle tonight's teaching, Wisdom for Wealth. Amen? Wisdom for Wealth. Deuteronomy 8, 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Why? That he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. Praise God. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he. Yesterday, um, if you were around, we noted four things from this scripture. Number one, God's will for our lives is what? Prosperity. Hallelujah. If you are following the will of God, you will prosper. Amen. So if anyone prospers without doing the will of God, he will certainly crash land. But if you are doing the will of God, you'll prosper. Praise God. If you are doing the will of God, you've not seen prosperity, don't worry, you're in transition. It will manifest. The next thing we saw is that God is my source. Amen. I, I was so blessed when you said, Zenaria said, that's what she left with. How old is she, please? Seven. I will add that to my CV, amen, that I taught prosperity a seven-year-old girl understood <laughs> what I was saying. Amen. But I've learned through the years not to despise these little children. Even though they are little in stature, their spirits are not little. They are following very well. Very well. I remember I ministered for a servant of God. Uh, the next day he was telling me, after we went home, his little girl, I think she was four or five, now told her big brother, you see, I'm the man of God. Now listen. I was illustrating something I said exactly. He said, do you understand? I will do another illustration. He said, ah, ah, this is serious, amen? Children are learning, they are watching, and they are following. He said, God is our source. Amen. Can we say it personalized? God is my source. Say it again. And, and you know, the, the scripture pastor closed with, very enlightening. I mean, very inspiring and enlightening. Can we look at that, please? 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8. As, as he was saying it, I just saw something that I want to say on that. He has said it in a different way. I just want to say it in another way. Praise God. God is my source. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8. See, he read it for us. Now, hallelujah. Verse 8, please. 8. And God 
is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always have an all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Nine, I think it's verse 10 I'm looking for. Verse 10. Okay, now, he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed. So I'm sure you know to minister means uh, to give or to supply. God gives it to the sower. That means God, listen now, God is not just my source in reference to my harvest. He is also the source of the seed. Amen? You know, many times believers think that when it is seed, I will have to sacrifice. But when it's bread, God will bring it. No. He is the source of both seed and bread. Say amen. He is the source of both seed and bread. That means if God tells you about a seed to sow, he is revealing to you what he is ready to give you. Come on, did you get that? Praise the Lord. If he tells you about a seed to sow, he's revealing to you what he's ready to give. Maybe a best illustration of that. Now, this is not my message. I just hope it will help someone. Amen. A, a best illustration of that in scripture is God telling Isaac, Abraham, sorry, Abraham to offer Isaac. Yes. Hallelujah. How many of us think that when God said that to Abraham, he really wanted Isaac dead? No. Before saying that, he had prepared a lamb that will be offered. And that lamb is a type of Christ slain before the foundation of the earth. Say amen. So when God said, when God said to Abraham, give me your Isaac, he provided the Isaac in a lamb. Say amen if you get me. What does that mean? Whatever God asks you to give, he will provide it for you. Mm-hmm. Whatever God asks you to give, he will provide it for you. That is why he gives the seed only to a sower. Because if you are not a sower, you will not fulfill the mission that the seed has. Hallelujah. So, <clears throat> God cannot ask you for a million naira and he's giving you 10,000 naira. That's inconsistent. What he asks, he will give. The Lord will provide for himself a lamb for the sacrifice. Say an amen. The Lord will provide for himself a lamb for the sacrifice. Now, what I'm trying to say in simple terms here is, learn to believe God for seed the same way you believe for harvest. Amen? Learn to believe God for seed the same way you believe for harvest, same way you believe for bread. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, many of us, when it comes to bread, our faith is aggressive. Oh, Lord, I believe I received that car. Lord, I believe I received that house. Lord, I believe I receive that wife. Amen. But when it comes to seed, you say, well, if it is the will of God, he will bring it, then I will give it. No, let your faith be aggressive for seed the same way you are for bread. Say an amen. amen. Seed, seed. Now tell me, what does God give first? He that ministered seed to the sower, then minister bread. What does he give first, seed or bread? Say it aloud. Say it. So what should we believe for? In other words, if you are not exercising faith for seed, there's no evidence you have faith for harvest. Ah, one person had me what does he give first? Seed, then what? Bread. If you're not exercising faith for seed, no evidence you have faith for harvest. Let me say it this way. Hallelujah. The harvest accompanies the seed the same way a man's shadow follows him. Your shadow can never appear until you have appeared. So the harvest can never appear until seed has been. But God is my source. Say Amen. Hallelujah. Say, God is my source. Say, amen, if he's your source. Praise God. So as Pastor was explaining that, I mean, the light just shine in my heart. Amen. That 
if I am wise enough financially, I should be more aggressive about believing God for seed than I am for harvest. Because if seed has gone to ground, harvest must show up. Say an amen. So the second thing we learned yesterday is that God is my source. Number three, uh, God gives us the power to get well. Then number four is the purpose for wealth. Well, from that number three is where I want to pick up and just explain a few things as God permits me tonight. If you are ready, say I'm ready. If you are ready, say hallelujah. Thank you. I like, I like, I like you. You love the word of God. I can see how you are zealously alert waiting to take the word. Amen. Praise God. You know, for some persons, um, I, I went somewhere we're supposed to have word session, four, four different word session, one hour in between. So after the first one hour, you know, I just finished the first one hour, then the pastor came up and said, it's break time. Everybody go and take snacks and tea. So they went for it. Well, I said, understandable. Then I came up for second word. They say, it's time for lunch. Go and carry your pounded yam. Or swallow acid chai. And when people eat pounded yam, you know their eyes get pounded, isn't it? So as I came back, their eyes were pounding. I said, Dear God, <laughs> I told the pastor, no break again. Let me finish what I'm doing. But but I'm glad you are allowed. Celebrate yourself. Amen. Amen. Celebrate yourself. Nobody will celebrate you more than you celebrate yourself. Do it. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's why the Agama Lizard does that. Nobody has ever called Agama Lizard in speech and prize giving day to give an award. So he's always doing, I try, I try, I try. Amen? Praise God. So we said the third thing to learn here is that God does not give us directly wealth, but what does he give us? Power to get wealth. Power to get wealth. And yesterday we saw that the gospel is the power. So what is the power God gives us to get wealth? Talk to me. What is the power God gives us to get wealth? The gospel. So uh, will, will I be changing the meaning if I say God gives us his word to get wealth? Is that changing the meaning? Is it the same thing? All right, beautiful. God gives us his word to get wealth. Say an amen. God gives us his word to get wealth. Praise God. So what God gives us to get wealth is the gospel, also known as his word. Thank you for another amen. amen. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 3. I want us to compare two verses of scriptures, and we will see what God refers to as... Um, Wisdom for wealth. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 19. Proverbs 3 and verse 19. God gives us his word to get wealth. All right. Okay. Proverbs 3, verse 19. Please read with me if you don't mind. The Lord, by wisdom, has what? Founded the earth. Let's pause there. How did God create the earth? Say it again, please. Please, just answer me. I know it sounds too simple. Can we say, how did God create the earth? By wisdom. Now, Hebrews 11 verse 3. Let's compare that with Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. Hebrews 11 verse 3. Okay, let's read Hebrews 11 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds we are framed or created by what? The word of God. According to Hebrews, the worlds we are created by the word of God. According to Proverbs, the Lord by wisdom founded the earth. Wisdom founded the earth. The word of God founded the earth. Therefore, the word of God is the wisdom of God. Say an amen. The word of God is what? The wisdom of God. 
the word of God is the wisdom of God. So when the Bible says God gives us his word to make wealth, he's also telling us that God gives us his wisdom to create wealth. Say amen. God gives us his wisdom to create wealth. Say amen. amen. Wealth comes by wisdom. Say with me if you don't mind. Okay now, say it again. Uh, there's no talk of wisdom without wealth. Is somebody with me? There's no talk of wisdom without wealth. I want us to read another scripture. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10. New Living Translation now. Wealth comes by wisdom. Wealth comes by wisdom. Wealth comes by wisdom. Now, look at Ecclesiastes 10.10. 10. In the King James Version, it says, If the iron be blunt, and he do not wet the edge, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Can we see the New Living Translation if we have? Yes. Read it with me, please. Using a dull art requires great strength. So, sharpen the blade. That's the value of wisdom. What does it do? It helps you to succeed. Amen? Wisdom does what? Helps you to succeed. Now, um, uh, I, I don't want to infer. I want you to see for yourself. New King James Version, this same verse. Amen? New King James Version. Glory, hallelujah. All right. If the axe is dull, one does not sharpen the edge, then must he use more strength. But wisdom brings success. What brings success? Please help me preach tonight. What brings success? What will bring you financial success? Please say it again. What will bring you financial success? Now financial success, that's wealth, isn't it? Wisdom brings financial success. But I want you to see what this verse says closely because uh, it's better to you see for yourself or you may get angry with me for fighting what you have believed for long. But when you see that is the word of God, you accept it or fight God. Amen? I'm just an errand boy. I'm not preaching me. It's the word of God. What brings financial success? So what brings wealth? Wisdom. But let's see what he began by saying. If the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. That's like great labor, isn't it? More strength, great labor, or hard work. He say you have to use hard work. But in contrast to hard work, he says wisdom brings success. So two things I want to say to you here in simple terms. That means success does not come by hard work. Success does not come by hard work. Hello? Financial success does not come by hard work. Wealth does not come by hard work. You see how you've gone quiet on me now. I know it's destroying something you have believed. Praise God. Wealth does not come by hard work. Now, somebody will say, ah, that's my own remedy. That's all I want to hear because I don't like work at all. <laughs> Thank you. So flip it the other side. Wealth does not come by laziness. Laziness and hard work will not give you wealth. How does wealth come? By wisdom. Say it aloud. How does wealth come? By. Come on. How does wealth come? By. Now, how many of us know that nobody plans to be poor? Come on. Wave your hand if you don't mind. Nobody plans to be poor. Praise God. Everybody wants to be rich. Now, listen to me. If you ignore wisdom for wealth, you will devote yourself to hard work trying to be rich. And working so hard to be rich will only leave you frustrated. Jesus said, labor not to be rich. Cease from your own wisdom. Labor not to be rich. 
Cease from your own wisdom. Uh, so when you see people toiling and toiling and toiling to be rich, it's because they have ignored wisdom. Hallelujah. Wealth comes by what? Wisdom, not by hard work. Wisdom, not by hard work. Glory, hallelujah. Come on, I say glory, hallelujah. Uh, you know, in just plateau here, if you're in just, you must have seen this. Um, many times when I come around in just, I would see um, a couple of old women somewhere by the road breaking stones. They will walk from morning, 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., breaking stones. Are they working really hard? Are they earning much? Talk to me. Are they earning much? That's, that's a practical illustration that wealth does not come by hard work. Wealth comes by wisdom. Say amen if you agree. How does wealth come? Say it again. How does wealth come? So if I am interested in wealth, what should I go for? Wisdom. Thank you. Praise God. Wealth come by wisdom. Let, let, let's read one more scripture on that. Then I will advance my talk. Amen. Praise God. Are you in the house? Anyone that despises wisdom can never be wealthy. Anyone that despises wisdom can never be wealthy. So we can tell how committed you are to true prosperity by your commitment to wisdom. If wisdom does not occupy an important place in your heart, then uh, you are not serious about prosperity. Glory, hallelujah. Now, let's read this other scripture on that. Ecclesiastes 2, verse 26. Wealth comes by wisdom. Wealth comes by wisdom. Hallelujah. Wealth comes by wisdom. I feel like shouting that. Wealth comes by wisdom. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. Ecclesiastes 2 and verse 26. You know, um, um, there's a program we hold in Zaria called Great Days. Amen. Our pastor has been there many times. January this year, pastor was around. And what a great blessing. Let me appreciate pastor. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we are still breaking down the many things you said. So um, the meeting started like Sunday. We had many speakers speaking. So by Saturday evening, there was just one speaker left uh, that will close Saturday night and Sunday. So before he ended, I, I shared just a little on spiritual understanding. So in the course of my sharing, I asked them a question. Should I ask you? Some people don't want to answer. Should I ask you the question? Thank you. If I put a book on my right hand, How to Be a Millionaire, and I put, put one million naira on my left hand and ask you to choose, which one will you choose? The book, How to Be a Millionaire, one million naira on the left. Huh? Okay, you will take the one million and buy the book. <laughs> All right, let's ask another question. What if the book is 990,000 naira? Which one will you take? You will take one million naira and buy the book. Now I know that God Live Assembly is a sister church to Father's Delight. You are thinking alike. Maybe you are identical twins. You would take the money and buy the book. But can I ask you a question? If you enter into an exam, multiple choice answers, A, B, C, or D. They say choose the right one. If you have chosen A, are you permitted to choose B? This question I ask you is multiple choice. The moment you choose the money, you forfeit the book. 
And, and you know, if you have written any multiple choice question in exam, if you choose more than one answer, you get a zero. So you are saying you will take the money and buy the book, you are getting a zero. So I ask you again, which one will you choose? Huh? No, no, no. <laughs> Excuse me. If you are choosing the book, let me see your hand. I will count. Okay. Thank you. You will choose the one million naira. Let me see your hand. Ah, PDP has won. Those that chose the book have won. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Now, uh, you, you know what that question is actually testing? Listen, you know what that question is actually testing? Your value for wisdom. When you buy a book, you are going for wisdom. When you pick the money, you are going for money. Listen, wisdom will always bring wealth, but wealth cannot bring wisdom. So if you are wise, you go for the book. That's why in Proverbs 4, 7, the Bible says, Wisdom is the principal thing, the first and most important. In all you're getting, get wisdom. Should I ask another question? Any volunteer, any parent? Volunteer, I want to ask the parent. Volunteer. I don't want anybody embarrassed. That's why I'm asking for volunteer because the question may embarrass you. Okay, you volunteer, sir. Okay, thank you. If if your little child, your little boy of six years old, comes home and says, Daddy, find me one row of five hundred thousand naira dear. Want to go and enjoy with my friends in school. Will you do that? Will you give him? All right. What if your little boy comes back up with a paper, a note from the teacher that school fees is now increased to one million naira, not 500,000? Will you pay it? Also, you will pay one million naira for him to learn, but you will not give him 500,000 to consume. What you are simply saying is that wisdom is better than money. So please, if they ask you, in case any pastor asks you another day, don't choose the money. Choose what? The book. You know the question I asked you just now? It's not original with me. I got it from God. God appeared to Solomon. Solomon, after offering so much sacrifices, ah, uh -uh, God just saw thousands and thousands. He said, Solo, Solo, what do you want? Millionaire or wisdom? What did Solomon ask? Wisdom! And God said, you have made a wise choice. That because you've asked for wisdom, I will give you riches, I will give you long life, and you will have the wisdom. Praise God. Wisdom will not only make you wealthy, it will sustain the wealth. Glory, hallelujah. And it will keep you above. Somebody say an amen. amen. So, if you are to choose between the book and one million naira, what will you choose? Thank you. I want to ask you, I want to ask you to be sure you're understanding what I'm saying. Praise God. <laughs> if you as a believer cry out to God and say, Lord, I'm tired of my financial level. I need a new level. I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a billionaire. How will God answer this? What will he send to you? Huh? Wisdom. Say it aloud. What will he send to you? Do you now understand why God organized this prosperity convention for us these three days? You have been crying that you need a new level, so God has sent what? Wisdom! Ah, I need your permission to say the next thing, sir. I need your permission. Can I flow? Let me ask you a question, people. You answer this, then I will give you an advice as your pastor. Pastor has permitted me, so I'm talking like your pastor now. Are you with me? If you eventually pick that book in exchange for one million naira, 
And I tell you, I guarantee you by God, this book will make you a millionaire. Then when you went home, you found out it's just 10 pages that you can finish in 20 minutes. And you have forfeited one million naira for 20 pages book. Tell me the truth. And I told you that many persons, over a million persons have become millionaires just reading this. Tell me the truth. How many times will you read that book? Huh? Somebody said he will read it a million times. Until... Until the result come, you just keep reading it. Because if the wisdom to make me well this year, I have to keep going over it again and again and again and again. Now, we said this prosperity convention is the wisdom for wealth. You will get this message and keep listening again and again and again. Not just this by message, all the messages in this meeting, you listen again and again and again until the result shows up. Help me tell somebody, please don't waste this convention. You know, sometimes we really waste conferences like this. After the meeting, we say, God, ah, that's great meeting, man. Pastor Chintok and Pastor Tendi are dangerous combination. No, we are profitable combination, amen? <laughs> Not dangerous. <laughs> amen. But beyond that, you need to listen again and again and again. I heard Pastor Sarah talking about it. Faith comes by. Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Let me tell you something. A research was made one time, and they said the best listener, best listener, listening to a message, one hour message, will live with 25% of what was said. So after a message, when you think you have heard, you've not really heard. I don't know if you have experienced that, that sometimes it's after playing a message 10 times, you will say, ah, was this thing also said? Do I have a witness in the house? So what's the wisest thing to do? Keep listening again and again and again and again. Thank you for one amen. amen. Oh, I didn't get the amen. Let me hear another amen. amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 26. Go for wisdom. Go for wisdom. That's what I'm emphasizing tonight. Go for wisdom. Amen? Wisdom for wealth. Hallelujah. And um, please pay attention. Follow me. Not talking much. You've had much. I just want to link some few things. Then we will go home. If you agree, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Ah, when I say go home, see the hallelujah went up. Jesus is Lord. For God give it to a man. Please read with me if you don't mind. God give it to a man that is good in his sight. What does God give to a man that is good in his sight? Say it. And what? And what? Uh, please pause. 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 You know the word of God. Uh, we can summarize these three things in one word. He said God give to a man that is good in his sight. Wisdom. Wisdom comes by the word of God. Knowledge, knowledge comes by the word of God. Joy, joy comes by the word of God. So what does God give to a man that is good in his sight? The word. So that you are receiving God's word now, you are good in God's sight. Oh, shout an amen if you had that. To a man that is good in God's sight, he gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy. Summarize the word. But to the sinner, that's why they are not here. To the sinner, what does he give them? Travail, hard work. To gather and to heap up that they may do what? Give to him that is good before God. Did you get that message? Ah, he's giving one that is good in his sight, wisdom. And he's giving another one travail, hard work, ha, work and work to gather to give to the man that is good in God's sight. Say an amen. amen. Now, what does God give to a man that is good in his sight? Huh? Now, so I want you to notice, praise God, the sinners are not given to every believer. They are given to those that have received the word. 
Did you see that? So that they will give to the man that is good in God's sight. The one that has the word. I mean, believers for long, we have talked about wealth transfer. The riches of the Gentiles are laid up for the righteous. That's scriptural. But who will they give to? A man that is good in God's sight. Who is the man good in God's sight? The one with the word. Say hallelujah. Say another hallelujah. Uh, so when God sends a sinner with wealth into this church, for example, he will be looking for a worded person to give the money to. So what we use in exchange for wealth is the word we have received. As you receive word now, get ready for wealth. Ah, one person say amen. One person say amen. So you see, that's why all through this meeting, God is not giving us dollars. He's not giving us pounds. He's giving us the word so that those who have labored there will come and give to us their material blessings in exchange for this wisdom. Say hallelujah if you heard me. What do we need for wealth? Wisdom. Whether you say wisdom or the word of God, you are correct. So let me see which one you are choosing. What do you need for wealth? Thank you. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 32. Wisdom for wealth. Wisdom for wealth. Hallelujah. Wisdom for wealth. Proverbs 1 and verse 32, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 132. Oh, we don't have verse 32. Proverbs 1 verse 32. Please, let's read it together again if you don't mind. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. Let's read the next part. And the prosperity of fools shall what? So, what do you think prosperity of fools will destroy them? So, if God gives prosperity to a foolish believer, what will that do to him? Does God want any of his children destroyed? So if you are foolish, will God bring prosperity your way? What will he bring? Wisdom, you are right. The word, wisdom. So, let me ask before I say the next thing. I don't want anybody stoning me. So if I cry unto God, oh Lord, give me wealth, give me prosperity, give me money. In answer, what will God send to me? Huh? Word. If the manifestation of the prosperity is taking a longer time, what does that mean? I'm still foolish, isn't it? God is trying to wear out the foolishness. So if your prosperity is taking long to manifest, dear God. I did not say it now. You are the one finishing it. Amen. If your prosperity is taking long to manifest, dear God, here is my advice. Deal with foolishness. They are angry. I have finished. Let me run away. Should I continue? What should you deal with if you want more money? Say it aloud. What should you deal with? What should you deal with? How do we deal with foolishness? By getting more word. Thank you, sir. If it was dollar that fell, fell, now many people will come. Only you came for the word. You have the wealth. What do you deal with? Say amen. What do you deal with if prosperity is delaying in manifestation? Foolishness. Get more word. Should I shout it again? If you want to see prosperity, get more word. Church people don't want to hear this. But that's the truth. If I want to see prosperity, what should I do? Get more word. No believer, please hear me, and this is the truth. No believer has a money problem. Just believe me. No believer has a money problem. No believer has prosperity problem. The only thing we have is believers that have wisdom problem. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Now, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I came in a bit late. I don't know if Pastor have explained this to us. Yesterday, he promised to tell us that money is a trust. 
Was that explained to us? Okay. So, tomorrow is another day. Amen. But can I say something on that? I will leave him to come and say what God has laid in his heart. Amen. In detail. Can I say something on that? Ah. All right. Let's get into a deal. If your, the volume of your voice gets low, I will assume you are tired. I will just go to my seat. Are we in agreement? Okay. So, can I make a little comment on, on that statement? Listen. Uh -huh, thank you, thank you. Listen, each time, each time God brings money into your hands is both a blessing and a test. Each time, I did not say sometime, each time God brings money into your hands is both a blessing and a test. What do I mean by that? If I break it down a little bit, you understand. Anytime money comes into your hand is both your harvest and seed. A blessing as a consequence of your previous obedience, a test, God is asking, are you ready for next level? Hallelujah. I ready for next level. I mean, I mean, Pastor explained this thing vividly using himself as example. He said, I find out that each time I carry out a faith project, my faith is strengthened and stretched. Then the next time God is not giving the same faith project, he takes me to a higher level. Why? When God brings money that is supposed to be seed and you sow it, the heaven record that you have passed one test, you move to the next level. He brings money and you sow, you pass another test, you move to the next level. But if God brings money and you eat it all, you repeat that class. He brings again, you eat it all, you repeat that class. And you know, in the natural, there are some schools that if a child fails, they say, well, so that he will not be demoralized, let's push him to the next class. In the spirit realm. Until you pass all, there is no carryover. See, God, if, if you fail the lessons of primary one, are you with me? God will still love you. He will still give you suya and shawarma, plus yogurt, plus ice cream. He will pamper you and say, I love you, but you will remain in primary one. Ten years after, you will still be there. So why is everybody moving except me until you pass? No promotion. In the realm of the spirit, no magu magu, no ojuru. Until you pass, no promotion. So if you wonder why your prosperity is delaying, check your financial test, whether you are passing. Hi. Amen have reduced who? Amen have reduced who? You, you remember what the Bible said to us in Hebrews 11 about Abraham? By faith, Abraham went tested. By faith, Abraham went tested. He offered up Isaac, who tested him? Talk to me if you're in the house. Who tested him? Now, listen to me. When it comes to your finances, you will have to pass divine tests. Now they have reduced their amen. Are you still here? You will have to what? Pass divine tests. If you don't pass it, you remain in the same level. Oh, so blessed the way pastor told us, provision is not prosperity. God will provide your needs, but you will not prosper. Because to prosper, you must pass the test. And one way to pass the test is to give as God is leading you in your heart. The laborers so shall be made fat. There is seed that scattered and yet have in plenty. There is one that withholds more than necessary and he tends to poverty. Say amen. amen. Oh, say another amen. amen. Oh, I will never forget the first time God asked me, as a civil servant, I was lecturing. God asked me to give him three months salary, one, two, three, consecutively. 
And not to my own ministry where I was pastoring. You already mentioned who to give to. Three months. You know what I asked God? I said, Lord, three months? He said, yes. I said, Lord, have you ever been a salary earner at all? <laughs> Certainly he has never been, isn't it? I said, how can, three months far? Then I reminded God that as a lecturer and member of ASU, ASU, if you just touch our salary with 10%, we'll go on strike. Now you are saying 100% times three. Ha! Let me ask you, let me ask you please, answer me a simple question. Do you think God needed my three month salary to do his assignment? No, we don't want to mention how much was it, amen? Some people will get angry and say they don't want to become lecturers. But I will mention to you small, amen? <laughs> Not that one. if I say this one, this one will bless you. All of you that are insulting lecturers, you will change your mind. So I graduated from the university and went for NYC. You know, the favor of God helped me. The same, the same month I finished my NYC, I got an offer to start lecturing, but I started the next month. So I rejoiced, and as of that time, many of my colleagues were still in school. Some that were doing um, five years course, six years course, they were in school, and those that were my classmates and had carry over, they were still in school. So if I was moving around on campus, you would think it's one of the students, they just rally around me, hey, Tende. So that I got the job, they celebrated more than me. They rejoiced, they rejoiced. Finally, one of them pointed somewhere where we need to go and wash it. I spend money in washing it. He said, level have changed. He said, level have changed. When they paid the first salary, I realized it was less than the amount I used in washing the appointment letter. He said, gee, George. Ah, thank God for my father. Uh, he, my father was not that rich, but very caring. Uh, so my pocket money then was like 4,500 naira monthly as a student. Then I got employed. My salary was less than 4,000 naira. So as soon as they paid the first salary, I went straight to the Senate building. I said, they made a mistake. It's not, I said, I'm a senior staff. This is not my salary. They say, actually, this one, it reached so because we added baggage allowance. Next month, it will be less than that. So I left that place. I came home. I told my father, I'm not working again. So why? I say I want to be a student for life. Pocket money was better. I mean, as student, nobody was expecting me to send home. But now as lecturer, they want me to send home. My colleagues are expecting me to send to them. In fact, for the first one year of lecturing, it was terrible. I would receive salary first week, by second week, fully broke. The students that come to receive from me, I would see them buying... Buying suya, I couldn't afford the onion. Condition was so terrible. So I was in that kind of terrible condition when the Lord said three months salary. So I asked again, was, was God looking for money to sponsor his work? Come on, talk to me. Talk to me. All right, talk to me. Our pastor is a righteous man. I know him. If pastor picks John now to go to Lagos and buy three buses for the church and each one will cost 30 million naira only, who will sponsor it? Huh? Is it John that will sponsor it? Who will sponsor it? Now listen to me. I said that to tell you. If God gives you an assignment, he will sponsor it. I wish I had one amen. amen. Can I say the next one? You are not rich enough to sponsor God's work. Humble yourself. You are not rich enough to sponsor God's work. So anytime God asks you to give, He's giving you a financial test. And the way to pass a test is to get wisdom. You're not rich enough to sponsor God's work. If you try that, you will crash. 
So if God gives you an assignment, he sponsors it. If God asks you for a seed, he sponsors it. Whatever God expects of you, he will sponsor it. Say an amen. amen. So I was struggling to make ends meet every month until God asked for three months salary. Now here is another place where believers seem to miss it. Praise God. The Bible said, be followers of them who through faith and what? Say it aloud. Who through faith and what? But you know what we do in church? We sow seed on Sunday morning. We want to read on Monday morning. There's patience. When God asked me for three months salary, I gave the first month salary. I did not reap anything. I didn't see it. A second month, I did not see it. Well, I told myself, it's too late to back out. I've gone too far. I will give the third month. But when I gave the third month, Heaven is my witness. I won't be lying on holy altar of God. When I gave the third month salary, that was the last time I got broke before month end. At that time, let me tell you the truth. My salary did not change, but my supply changed. <laughs> living by salary alone is living in bondage. In fact, living by salary, don't move the word alone, is bondage. Say an amen. amen. Come on now. Say an amen. amen. So when God is said to deliver anyone from financial challenges, he will bring financial tests. He will ask you to give. Give your Isaac. He will, he will ask the widow to feed Elijah. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? That's the wisdom of God. It doesn't make sense, but it changes life. As he asks you to give, things are changing in your life. Somebody say an amen if you are hearing what I'm saying. Uh, be, be, before I'm through teaching tonight, I won't be teaching for too long, but be listening to me with one ear. Use the other ear to listen to your heart because divine instruction about your finances will drop. I mean what I'm telling you. You cannot listen to a teaching on power to get wealth without receiving divine instructions. They will come. They will come. They may not come the way you expect, but they will come. Glory. Hallelujah. I choose to stop that testimony there because I, I don't want to finish the testimony or else tomorrow I won't know what to tell you again. Praise the Lord. The prosperity of fools will what? Destroy them. Talk to me. The prosperity of fools will what? So the same way you send your child to school before giving him money, God will give you wisdom before bringing money. Can I use this scripture to make a statement? Uh-oh. I thought we have agreed. Can I use this to make a statement? Any believer who wants to be rich without getting wisdom is foolish. And he will never be. Wealth comes by wisdom. Say it if you don't mind. For the last time. Second Timothy chapter 3. Why are you? Second Timothy chapter 3. Ah. Huh. Verse 14, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Now, read with me verse 15 slowly. And from a child thou hast known what? The holy scriptures which are able to do what? Make thee wise unto salvation. Okay, let's take them gradually. What will the scripture do to us? It will make us wise. So if I want wisdom for wealth, where should I go to? The scriptures. Are you with me? If I want wisdom for success, where should I go to? The scriptures. My commitment to wisdom is my commitment to wealth. Correct? Likewise, my commitment to scriptures is my commitment to wisdom. So you can tell how determined you are 
to be wealthy as a child of God by your commitment to the word of God. What would the scripture do? Let's read that. Let's read that again. From a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able. Ah, now this is beautiful. Which are oh, this is beautiful. Which are that means the scripture contain divine abilities. The ability of God is contained in His Word. What's another word for ability? Power. That power to get wealth is here. Say amen if you are getting that. Amen. Now, here is where many times we miss it. I want you to read with me. The scriptures are able to give thee. Come on, help me. They are able to what? Give thee. What will the scriptures do? Make thee. Make thee. Listen. God is more committed to making you than giving you. God is more committed to making you than giving you. Why is it so? Who you are made determine what you will have. Can I say that again? Who you are made determines what you will have. So uh, let's look at this scripture, Acts 20, verse 32. Glory, hallelujah. Woo! Oh, I am blessed. Are you blessed? Now, Acts 20, 32, and now, brethren, I commend you to who? To God and to the word of his grace. What will the word of God do to us, which is able to what? Build you and give you. Can we say it together? What will the word do? Build you and... Come on, say it for the last time. What will it do? Build you and... What comes first? The building, the making. Before God will give you a million, he will make in you... The wisdom, the capacity to sustain the million. Who you are determines what you will have. Yes. Do you agree with me? Yes, All right, please, sir. Can I come down to one illustration with my seat? All right. I pass us permission. I want you to watch what I'm doing. Amen. Oh, I can see somebody here. Beautiful. Amen. Uh, if, if, if you can see this, brother, wherever you are seated, wave. Let me see. All right. Thank you. Okay, Makatashi. Hallelujah. Can you see any sweet around him? The kind that ministers are taking? Can you see any drink around him? Can you see any honor around him? All right. Now, can you please take your notes? All right. I have pastor's permission. So, by that authority, I have changed his seat. I'm making him a better person. Come now. You are not a member again. You are a pastor. Come on now. Come on now. Ah, please, please, sir, sustain that handshake. You have given me revelation. Sustain that handshake. Can you see? Because of what I have made him, his company has changed. His level has changed. He's no longer shaking ordinary men, he's dignified men. When God makes you, your experience is changed. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, the, the way you shouted, it looked like you won't be offended if I ask you a question. Will you be ma? All right. Can you greet your neighbors where you are seated? No, no, greet him. He was there. Shake him there. You cannot. Why? The people in the same level with you will look for you, will not find you because your level has. Now, I, I want you to notice what happened. I could have carried 
this sweet and this water to him and give to him. I would have given him, but his level will still remain the same. So God can give you millions, but your level will not change. But when he makes you to sit on high, everything is changed. Somebody shout an amen if you are here. So what God is doing here through his servant, by the word, he's lifting you from that level to his own level and your experiences are changed forever. Give the Lord a shout if you're in the house. Please sit down. What's your name, sir? Micah. Micah. Uh, so, you see, I hope it's not your wife. Dear. Uh -huh. Let me not cause trouble that you go and settle at home. Amen? So, you see, um, his neighbor sought for him where she used to know his seat. Alas, he has changed level. Why? He attended prosperity convention and received wisdom. <laughs> So somebody will leave this place. They'll be looking for those traveling by night bus. They won't find you there. You have flown in an aircraft. What has changed? Wisdom has changed your levels. Say an amen. amen. What unit are you in church, sir? Sanctuary. Sanctuary keeping. Praise God. Have you ever had any protocol officer greeting you? Good day, sir. John, come, please. I want you to greet the men of God beginning from here to that side. Here is John bowing to you. <laughs> Have you ever experienced that? That means when God by his word make you a better person, you'll be having first time miracles. They didn't hear me. I said first time miracles. Things you have not experienced, you will start experiencing in the name of Jesus. Go ahead, go ahead. You are greeting men of God. Can you see that? The same way he's greeting our senior pastor, that's how he's greeting Micah. Can I talk to someone? God used his servant to empty the wisdom he has known upon us. The same way finances greet his account, they'll be greeting your account. I said they'll be greeting your account. God is more interested in making us. Now you have sweet. Take sweet. Thank you. You have water. Take water. You are thinking I will say you have wife. Stand up and go. Stand up. It is enough. Yes. I was just doing illustration. For the man wants to take wife. If I catch you, dear. <laughs> Give the Lord a shout if you're in the house. <laughs> Somebody shout, wisdom. wisdom. Shout it again. Wisdom. So after this meeting, what is the first change you expect? A making or just money entering your account? Making. Celebrate the Lord if you're in the house. Celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, sincerely, I am not saying this to promote my friend. God is my witness. I, I can't come on holy altar of God and just make noise. Never make light of a pastor that feeds you with knowledge and wisdom. Jeremiah 3.15. Maybe if I show you this, you understand better. Jeremiah 3.15. Don't make light of it. You say, eh, some pastors are giving their members 2,000 naira after every month. But, but here, every day when we come, Pastor Chinto will say, let me show you something. It's by showing you something that you will show the world something. Say amen. amen. <laughs> it is where, sir? <laughs> amen. Jeremiah 3, verse 15. Praise God. Shout Wisdom. Shout it again Wisdom. for the last time. Wisdom. When you meet anyone more successful than yourself, don't look to their hands for provision. 
look to their heart for wisdom. I want to say that again. When you meet anyone more successful than you financially, don't look to their hands for provision. Look to their heart for wisdom. Put more value on wisdom than paycheck. Wisdom will change your paycheck. I honor and adore my father in the Lord so much. He's gone home to be with the Lord. But God is my witness. He has never given me one naira. But he gave me wisdom. And with that wisdom now, I am attracting what? Oh, glory to Jesus. Let's stay humble, amen, and not talk. Can I tell you what I perceive in my heart now? Are you ready? Your future will thank you for attending this conference. Let me take it for that. Your children will thank you for attending this. Even your grandchildren, if Jesus tarried, they will thank you for attending this. You know why? You are learning wisdom. He makes us by wisdom. Now, see Jeremiah 3, verse 15. God says, I will give you. What will God give us? Pastors. I'm using a pastor here, for example. Please, look at what I'm doing. I will give you pastors. How? According to my heart. Now, what will a pastor, according to God's heart, do? Read, read with me. Who will feed you with rice and pounded yam plus take away? What will a pastor after God's own heart do to you? Feed you with what? Knowledge and understanding. When you get knowledge and understanding, what are you receiving? Wisdom. So any pastor that is not feeding you with knowledge of God's word is not after God's heart. Say amen. amen. Now, but, but see why I came here. This is somebody's deliverance. Amen. That is where I'm supposed to end the message. I've reached there, so no problem. I will, I will get there. Please answer me. This is my pastor, for example. Okay? He is given to me after God's heart. Correct? So, if I deviate from my pastor slightly, I am deviating away from what? God's heart for me. If I move away from my pastor, I am moving away from God's heart for me. If I want to follow the heart of God easily, what should I do? Follow my pastor. One way we get wisdom is by following our mentors. They don't hear me. I say one way we get wisdom is by what? Following our mentors. So I was in a minister's meeting recently. Somebody asked me a question because I, I just mentioned this about following your pastor. Somebody asked me a question. He said, sir, the way you talk about this mentor thing, I want you to tell me. I want you to tell us. Are you saying that it's not possible for a minister to succeed in a ministry without a mentor? I say it's only one minister that have succeeded without a mentor, Jesus Christ. I say, if you think you are God the Son, then you don't need a mentor. No, this one. Even if you don't say amen, I will continue. Amen? I won't pack my load. When I say your level change, you are shouting. Now I'm telling you how to change the level. You are doing, hmm, 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 hmm. Say amen, Jerry. Who do pastors think they are? What God has made them? You know, one of the things I tell my wife repeatedly, and of course, I thank God for her, 
that has registered in her heart, in her subconscious, she knows the difference. I said, there is a difference between Pastor Tende and your husband. So Pastor Tende is not your husband. Your husband is Joshua. Pastor Joshua is not the husband. Hello? There's a difference between Joshua and Pastor Joshua. When you talk about Pastor Joshua, you're addressing the oil. And the oil is the hand of God. If you despise the hand of God, you despise God. You know, some messages will make you shout. Some other messages will make your life to keep shouting. That's why when you listen to some things, you just go, hmm. And I was just beginning to enjoy Pastor Tendifa. Eh? See the way we were jumping when he did that illustration. Do more. Now he's saying, follow your pastor. Follow your pastor. Amen. Say amen. amen. In fact, if your, message, if your amen reduced, I will title tomorrow's message, follow your pastor. <laughs> now that's just a joke. Amen. Praise God. Joshua, be serious. Joshua, be serious. You're a man of God. Amen. So, what are we talking about? Wisdom. Is that not so? Wisdom for success. Where did I read last? 2 Timothy 3.15, the word that is able to make thee wise unto salvation. Okay, thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me do it this way now. Say amen. amen. Can we say it together? No, no success. Without wisdom. All right? No financial success without wisdom. No wealth without wisdom. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. There are three kinds of wisdom. Three. Three kinds of wisdom. And they correspond to the three kinds of success that we can experience. First Corinthians chapter 2. Let me open that. And oh, praise God. First Corinthians chapter 2, yes, verse 6. How be it, verse 6, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Perfect here is matured. Among them that are matured, yet not the wisdom of this world. So we can stop there a little. Praise God. Uh, please forgive me. How many kinds of wisdom did I mention? Make it four. Make it four. Pastor, why did you say three? We are learning. As we got here, I saw it. We are learning. Four kinds of wisdom. Okay, I think we should continue it tomorrow, isn't it? You are tired, isn't it? Four kinds of wisdom. What are they? Number one, he said, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world. The first one is wisdom of this world or human wisdom. Human wisdom. Amen? Human wisdom or wisdom of this world. Human wisdom will give you the human kind of success. Human wisdom will give you the human kind of success. For example, if a lawyer, a barrister, teaches you in the university, he's giving you human wisdom, you'll become a barrister like him. And you will succeed like him. A servant is not greater than his master. If he's fully taught, you'll be like his master. Am I right? If a medical doctor teaches you medical science, you become a medical doctor like him. Am I right? If a native doctor teaches you, you become what? A native doctor. You just become like your teacher. So there's human wisdom. 
And you know what? The problem with many believers is that we get born again in Christ, but want to live by human wisdom. Human wisdom at the best will make you a common man. You just be like every other person. When men are cast down, you also will be cast down. When men are complaining, you'll be complaining. When men are saying country hard, you, you will say times country hard, where, where? Human wisdom. You remember what Pastor have been illustrating with us? Emptied. Human wisdom will tell you when your balance is reducing, reduce your giving. That's why the Bible didn't say we should give according to our account balance. We should give according to what we propose in our heart. So the account balance should not determine your sowing. Your heart balance should determine your sowing. Did you hear that? Your heart balance, what God is saying. So the first one is human wisdom. I'm not arranging them in order of preference. It's just the way we are reading here. First one is human wisdom. He said, we speak not the wisdom of this world, not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Princes of this world means rulers of this world, the God of this world, Satan, the devil. So the second kind of wisdom is satanic wisdom. Satanic wisdom. It is earthly, it is sensual, and it is devilish. Satanic wisdom. Now, please, please, I want you to listen to this. I said four kinds of wisdom. Each one of them brings wealth, but different kinds of wealth. The first one, human kind of success or human kind of wealth. That's your level. The second one is satanic. I give you an example. If a man joins a secret society, an occultic group, amen, they will tell him, for example, bring the person you love most. Is it your wife? Yes. Kill your wife. Then you will get money. Hallelujah. So if somebody tells you that, ah, all those juju power cannot bring money, they get money, but it's satanic kind of success. How, how do we define satanic success? Help me. The blessing of the Lord, it make it rich and add it. So the blessing of the devil... It make rich and add more sorrows than the riches. Are you with me? Satanic wisdom will make you a rasa rasa. What's rasa rasa? You will lose on earth and you will lose in eternity. You will suffer here. You won't have peace. Nothing is working. And you may die and go to hell. If you want satanic wisdom, say hallelujah. Okay. That means everybody is listening to me very well. Praise God. I said, praise God. That's why the Bible says, envy not the prosperity of the wicked. Their prosperity will buy bed without sleep, buy food without appetite, buy clothes, nobody to wear it. Leprosy is everywhere but there's a better one. Say amen. amen. So we have seen worldly wisdom. We have seen satanic wisdom. Next one. Okay. First Corinthians 2. <laughs> I didn't know you followed me to that scripture. Where was I now? Verse 6. Uh, we speak not, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Wisdom of God. Now, the wisdom of God is twofold. That's why we have four. So, uh, if, you, if you want to match them together, you go back to three. But I think we should separate them. The wisdom of God is twofold. So, the first wisdom of God, which is number three, that we are reading, is called the written word of God. The written word of God. The written word of God is God's wisdom for your success. If you do what the word says, you will have wisdom 
to succeed. You know, God said to Joshua in Joshua 1 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it how day and night. This book, the word, that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it, then you shall make your way prosperous. I think it's the Amplified Translation that says, then, excuse me, you'll be able to deal wisely in life's affairs. So if I stay with the word of God, I will learn the wisdom of God for my success. Say amen, please. If I stay with the word of God, what will I learn? The wisdom of God for my financial success. Wisdom for wealth. Say amen. amen. Woo, I didn't even know I've used this much time. Praise the Lord. I say after I move. I say after. Pastor is very generous, even with time. Amen. I went somewhere to preach. As soon as I got off stage and saw the time allotted, all my revelation disappeared. All. Sincerely, I was preparing for one hour message. They gave me 20 minutes. I'm saying let's appreciate, Pastor. Amen. All right. So, now listen, listen. The written word of God is known as God's general wisdom for our success. Now, why is it general? It's applicable to all. If Pastor applies it and succeed, I apply it, I will succeed. It's general. But there is yet another wisdom that God has ordained for our success, which is specific. Let's read on. Back to 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7, please. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7. Thank you. But we speak the wisdom of God. Please help me appreciate the media team. Amen. Just, just help me appreciate them. I will tell you why. Glory. Hallelujah. You know, ba, to be projecting for a pastor like me, God will help you. Just keep jumping from one end to the other. I love those pastors that will open just one chapter and explain one chapter till they close because it's only one chapter they have read. I've read many chapters, amen? So let's keep going. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Now, see something about this wisdom. The first one, we say general wisdom written. Now, see, he said, even what? The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, unto our success. Can I explain to you? This one, hidden wisdom, I will tell you what it is before I break down. The hidden wisdom refers to the leading of the Spirit. The leading of God's Spirit is God's wisdom for your success. And it is specific for each and every believer. It's not general. Are you with me? It is specific. So we can call this God's specific wisdom for our success, a.k.a. the leading of the Spirit. Leadership of the Holy Spirit is God's specific wisdom for our success. Now, uh, let's do something briefly on this before we close. I trust that you've been blessed. Say amen. amen. Now, the leading of the Spirit, look at it. He said, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom. Say hidden wisdom. Say it again. Say it again. I will show you where to find the hidden wisdom. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 3. Amen. Woo! Oh my God. Somebody will get it. First Peter, Peter 3 and verse 3. Whose adorning let it not be outward adorning of plating the hair and wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. Let's read verse 4 together if you don't mind. But let it be of who? The hidden man of the heart. The hidden wisdom is found in the hidden man of the heart. The hidden wisdom is found where? In the hidden man of the heart. What does that mean? Right in your spirit. The specific wisdom God has for your success is in your spirit. 
Say hallelujah. Say, the written word of God is the same for every believer. Every believer. Anything pastor teaches us here and say is in the scripture, you can apply the same and it will work. Are you with me? But pastor also tells us that God sent him to do a program in England. He went and he came back with bountiful harvest, losing nothing. I cannot pack my load tomorrow after this conference. Say, England, here I come. It worked for him because God sent him there. Say an amen. amen. Now, this hidden wisdom, I've closed my Bible. Are you ready now? This hidden wisdom, I will tell you how to know it, is a specific word to a specific person in a specific situation. Specific word, specific believer in a specific situation, a.k.a. the voice of God to me. What is God telling you in your heart? Listen, child of God, let me say it very fast. If you don't know what God is speaking to you as a person, you are not ready for kingdom wealth. Kingdom wealth must be preceded by what God is saying. Say amen. amen. Ooh, God. Say another amen. amen. What is God telling you? It's not every one of us God has called to be a pastor. Even those of us that are pastors, it's not everyone that should start a church. Say an amen. amen. Even those that start church, it's not everyone that should have satellite churches. Don't say, my brother is doing it, I will do likewise. I like the way a servant of God, Dr. Oyedipo, said it. Okay. Only him can talk like this. He said, now, don't look because your younger brother has built a hospital with 50 beds. Hospital with 50 beds to treat patients. And you say, ah, we have the same somni, we came from the same womb, and he's my younger brother. I will build a hospital with 100 bed capacity. You say, you'll be the first patient in that hospital. <laughs> You know what that simply tells me? If you do what God has not sent you to do, you will be a victim in life. Ha! That 1 Corinthians 2, 7 says again, even the hidden wisdom which God has ordained when? Before the world. That means before you came to this world, there is a path. God has ordained that you should walk. And walking in that path is for your glory, for your success. If you find that wisdom, you keep rising. Say amen. amen. How do we find this wisdom? Please read with me slowly. I want you to see. I, I will just tie something. Can I tie some knots? Are you ready? Are you getting blessed? Ah, you know, since yesterday, Pastor, I've been quoting to us Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What does a shepherd do? He leads. So we can say, the Lord leads me. I shall not want. If I follow that wisdom in my spirit, broke days are over. Lack days are over. Struggling days financially are over. Oh, I'm hearing one amen in the house. Hata, manta, panta, leke, fata, siba. Hey, I'm hearing another amen in the house. Uh, please, leave that first Corinthians 2 a little bit. Travel with me. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. I will read to verse 6. So, please go with me patiently. Patiently. But it won't be too long. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. Amen. Jesus appeared by the sea, and he saw two fishermen. <laughs> Uh, they are washing their boots. They've tried everything. They couldn't get anything. Verse 2 now. Verse 2. Verse 2. I've finished verse 1. And he saw two sheep standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. Oh, my God. This is beautiful. You want to hear this? Verse 3. And he entered into one of the sheep, which was 
Simon's own, and prayed him or asked him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep. Yes? Verse 5. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, what did he say? Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a... Is that a specific instruction? Huh? Can, can somebody go to... Can you go to um, uh, Jerusalem now and trace that sea and go to the deep and say, I want to... I'm a doer of the word in daytime and catch? Or do you think um, Peter's colleague came back just an hour after and caught? That was specific to him, isn't it? So what, what kind of wisdom is that? The hidden wisdom specific for our success. Now, what's another word for a drought, for a harvest, isn't it? Let down your net for a harvest. That means every divine instruction that you receive is for your harvest. Every, not some. Every. Let it down for a harvest. Now, let's read on. There's something I want to bring out here quickly. For your harvest. Then he said in verse 5, praise God. And Simon answering said unto him. What did he say, please? Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. So when he let down the net, verse 6, let's read together. And when they had this done, they enclosed what? A great multitude of fishes and their nets did. What brought this bountiful harvest acting on divine instruction? Now listen, when there was no divine instruction, they toiled all night long and caught nothing. When divine instruction came, they had bountiful harvest without toiling. Did you get that? So what am I bringing in essence? Following divine instruction is bountiful harvest without toilings. Sweatless success. Bountiful harvest without toilings. See, when you follow the leading of the Spirit, eh, you appear smarter than you really are. People would think you are very smart. They will know you are following the smart one or the smartest one. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Huh? They won't just know that you are following somebody that is very smart, the smartest of all. If you are wise, child of God, learn how to follow God's voice. You know that song we sing regularly, Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Oh, I wish that's true. Wherever you lead, I will follow. Anyone that makes that dedication has arrived. Wherever God leads, you will follow, you have arrived. Because it is harvest without toiling. Say an amen, please. Amen. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Amen. Um, verse 7 now. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Yes. Now see about this wisdom specific, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have what? Crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen. Say amen if you agree with that nor ear had, neither have it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. How do we find them? Verse 10. But God has revealed them unto us. How? How do we find specific wisdom? By the Spirit of God in our hearts. Follow the leading of the Spirit. Follow the leading of the Spirit. Can we read Matthew 4, 4, please? Ah, so the tempter came to Jesus and tempted him, if you are the son of God, command this bread to become stone. How did Jesus overcome? All right, let's, let's read it together. But he answered, please read carefully, there's something I want you to take note of. He answered and said, it is 
written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that what? Proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You know, you know the mistake many times we make when we are quoting this scripture? We assume that Jesus was saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that is written. He did not say, man shall live by every word that is written. By what does man live? Every word that proceeds, present, continuous. The now word, the specific word God is giving you now. What is God telling you now? You cannot use the wisdom you used to conquer Jericho in fighting I. You will re 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 realize that I, I alone have fallen. Are you with me? God always has specific instruction in specific situations. So one time, long time ago, we needed to pay house rent. And it was quite challenging because we were moving from a smaller house to a much bigger house. So I was praying and believing God for the house rent. So the Lord led me now to give my wristwatch <laughs> to a man of God. When I gave it to him, it's a new wristwatch I've not used. When I gave it to him, he didn't wait to hear why I was giving the seed. He now said, I call in new wristwatches. I said, no, sir. He kept saying it. He said, yes, new wristwatches. You get many wristwatches. Ah, when he finished, I said, sir, that's not what I need. Now, it's house rent. And truly, like he said, two days after, I have four new wristwatches. <laughs> so I said, what should I do now? God said, take another one back to him. Before you give him, tell him what you want. I mentioned other people. That is house rent. So I, I took it to them. I gave it to them. They all say, we receive house rent. Then within one week, the money for house rent came in. Say amen. amen. Say another amen. amen. So another time, I needed house rent. I said, I found how it works. I took my wristwatch. I led myself. The other time, God led me. But now I led God. Amen. I said, God, I know how it works. I took my wristwatch, one, two, three, gave out, and no house rent. So I went to God and said, why? Man does not live by giving out wristwatches. It's by every word that proceeded. So if you have a noun situation, you should go for a noun word. Somebody say a noun word. And to every noun word is the wisdom of God for your wealth. Say an amen. amen. Lift your right hand and say after me, Dear Father, in the name of Jesus and by the help of the Holy Spirit, I ask that you fill my heart with a now word, with a now wisdom, with a specific instruction, specific direction for where I need to go next to have new levels. Lord, I thank you for how far you have led me, but I desire a new level financially. Fill my heart now with a specific wisdom for that new level in Jesus' name. Can you pray in the Holy Ghost over what you have said? If you believe it, just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Now what? Now what? Now what? Keep praying. Dossi babande. She brandas to lebeke nebosha labrante to rebeke lebrandish to gagaz. Pray in the name of Jesus.